Welcome. So we have with us a couple of cases of inclines, and we want to understand how to decompose these into our new coordinate system of parallel and perpendicular. So in this zero degree case, we can say, hey, what's perpen perpendicular to the floor? And that's in this direction. We can mark it with the perpendicular sign. What's parallel to the floor? We can mark it with this parallel sign. Does it matter whether we put parallel in this direction or that direction? Doesn't really. Perpendicular, usually we like to go kind of in the direction that things are happening in. So if we look at this case then, if we look at what force of gravity is doing, the force of gravity is going straight down. So we can say that our force of gravity is in the perpendicular direction. So we can say Fg is equal to negative Fg perpendicular. Or we can say then that Fg perpendicular is negative Fg, and that Fg parallel is zero. So that would be for the zero degree case. If we look at the 90 degree case, we can of course still draw our force of gravity, and our force of gravity is gonna be in this direction. We can write our coordinates what is perpendicular to the surface, what's perpendicular to the surface is in this direction. And what's parallel to the surface is in this direction. In this case, we can see that our perpendicular is zero and our parallel is positive or negative. So we can say Fg perpendicular is zero and Fg parallel is Fg. And this would be for the 90 degree case. So whatever we choose eventually, we are gonna have to have these work out with them. So in our general case, now we have an incline that's not zero or 90 degrees. It's a little bit less than 45, say 30 or so degrees. And now our force of gravity is going to point directly down. Such that the angle that it makes with here would be 90 degrees. And then we can decompose our force of gravity into its parallel and perpendicular direction. So our parallel direction and perpendicular direction are going to be in these. So I can draw right, a direction perpendicular to the ground and a direction parallel to the ground. So this would be Fg perpendicular and this would be Fg parallel. So we can see, right, since we've got right triangles, that we know that we're gonna have some sort of angle based on some of these, and there's gonna be some trig functions with it. We could maybe figure it out just with these two cases, but let's look at a couple of representative angles for this. The first angle to notice is that this angle and this angle are parallel to, or this line and this line are parallel to each other, so this angle is also theta. So now we can label two new angles. We can call this one phi and this one psi. So one relationship that we can have is that these are the three internal angles, so we have 90 plus phi plus psi is equal to 180 degrees, or we can say that then phi plus psi is equal to 90 degrees. But taking a look at psi and theta, we also know that psi plus theta has to equal 90 degrees. So what I can do is I can then solve for psi here by saying that psi is equal to 90 minus theta. And then lastly, I, what I can do is I can plug in psi to the first equation. If I do that, then I get phi, phi this angle right here, plus 90 minus theta is equal to 90 degrees. Well, I can then bring all of this over by right subtracting 90 minus theta, 
and then subtracting 90 minus theta. And that will get me just this phi on this side. And now I have 90 minus 90 minus theta, sorry, plus theta. Minus minus gives me a plus. And then these two will cancel out. So this gives me that this phi is equal to this theta. So then write this, I can then rewrite as my theta. And it might be nice just to get a better view of this angle. So we'll reproduce it here. So this is my force of gravity. And now I have this being the angle theta is a vertical angle. And this is FG perpendicular. And this is FG parallel. Well, if we remember our trig and specifically write our SOKATOA, we have that sine theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. This angle is theta, opposite theta is FG parallel. So we're saying that sine theta is equal to FG parallel over hypotenuse is FG. So we have our first relationship is that FG parallel is equal to FG sine theta. And then if we look at our co, cosine theta or ka is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So our cosine theta, what's adjacent to this angle is FG perpendicular over FG. So we get our second relationship, FG perpendicular equals FG cosine theta. So we can test that out for these cases. FG parallel is going to be sine of zero degrees, which is zero. FG perpendicular is to be FG cosine of zero, which is one, right? And we defined it as positive and this is negative, so everything's good here. And then in this case, right, FG perpendicular is cosine of 90 degrees. 90 degrees is zero, so we get zero. FG parallel, FG sine of 90 degrees, 90 degrees is one, gets us FG. So this is our general case. And what makes this especially confusing is very often we want to use x and y. But if we use x and y, we associate x with cosine, associate y with sine. Whereas for perpendicular and parallel, we'll get exactly the opposite because this is a vertical angle. So instead, probably easier to use parallel and perpendicular. And then we just have these new relationships in which to write down, practice with, and eventually learn.